Right, what have we got today? Well today, believe it or not, it's a cup. Now how boring can that be? Now don't worry, it's not just a normal cup. It's slightly different. I thought I'd just cover it just for fun, just a quick little um, overview of it, because it's not a review because I haven't used it yet, but I was replacing a cup that I use at work. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm sick and tired of, I'll make a coffee, I'll put it on the desk, I'll end up on the floor with a piece of equipment, fiddle, 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 then when I get back to the cup, it's cold. And I don't want to put the cup near electronics and things like that. So I thought, right, I'll have a look at this. The first reason that I looked at this was because it had a lid where you can actually stop spillage. So you've got this. I mean, obviously you can drink through there, but you can do that. And apart from this, if, it, if you quickly knock it, you can quickly pick it back up again. And hopefully, because this is a, has a rubber gasket, it shouldn't cause any issues. So I thought, I'll do that. And then I thought, while I'm at it, I might as well get one that actually keeps things cold if it's like on a summer's day or keeps things hot. So in that regards, I've got a vacuum flask type, but not the old sort of traditional vacuum flask where they used to use like glass and then mirror it to try and get the effect, but they, they tend to be brittle or there's expansion issues and then crack and shatter for unexpected reasons. So I went for a stainless steel one. So I'll tell you what this happens to be. So this is the Camelback. I've used Camelback stuff for years. Um, I used to use their bladders, um, their sort of uh, hydration units. I kind of moved away from them. I used a lot of them for running, um, long distance and things like that, shooting and things like that, out all day uh, in the woods and things like that. Uh, I tend to move away from them because I prefer the sauce bladders now. I put them in like the military type stuff and I just find them easier to clean. They don't gunk up as much. The, the bite valves are better. I'm not having to go to them for that, but I just I prefer them for what I need. But in regards to the quality of their stuff, perfect. I've never had anything fault a bit. So I looked at the Camelback, and I know they do all sorts of vacuum flasks and things like that. So this is the, it doesn't say this here, oh, it does. So the Camelback Camp Mug. Uh, if you were to look this up, you may find it under Horizon, uh, because it's within the Horizon range. Horizon, I think, relates to uh, cam more camping and outdoorsy stuff, which this is what this is intended for. Although I'm going to use it in an office obviously um, it's for taking camping because it's one of the things when you make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee hot chocolate or whatever when you're camping you do it in like a little titanium thing and you get it on the gas boiler and then it's red hot it's red hot so you put it down for five minutes then mysteriously it goes like stone cold it's like it's either too hot or far too cold so to slow down that change in temperature um, vacuum sealed units like this or with a vacuum chamber slows down that change between one temperature and another so I'm hoping this will do the same thing so this is the camp mug there's loads of other different ones in fact I think they send you in fact we'll have a quick look at that so they send you a little thing before I show you the unit so this is the little booklet that comes with it um, I've done this in 4k so you can zoom in and, and have a look if you want but I'm not going to belabor the point too much so control flow with a tri mode lid basically what they're talking about here is the lid so this comes off but if you notice the lid itself has a double see the double flaps there so a double it's one gasket of rubber but it's got like a double lip on it which is really really nice to see and that's all the way around and you can see you can hear when it goes in that that seals there's there's no full seal because it's got a small hole in the reason for that is if you've ever tried to pour like orange juice or you know apple juice milk something like that out of a jug it, it, you get that glug 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 because basically the liquid's trying to leave the vessel and the air is trying to get back in so it's 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 a push and pull it's in you can have a bit of liquid now get some air in a bit of liquid and that's what the glug is this is a you do that and as you're taking the liquid out the air is allowed to fill that space so i like that design they've actually thought about that and you can cover that up so they're calling that the tri what they're calling it the triforce or something like on uh, legend of zelda tri mode lid fair enough durable powder coat finish yes it has a powder coat finish this is here so as you can hear pretty pretty good looking um it's got a slight texture to it um it doesn't feel like paint it does feel like a proper powder coat and under here is stainless steel and the handle itself seems to be quite well attached and it's a similar material you can feel it there. And I like how, look how, I mean, I'm six foot four, so I've got massive hands, but look, I can get those in. I hate cups where you like this. Dainty little cups where you can't get your damn fingers and you feel like you're going for, you know, cucumber sandwiches and tea with the queen. I hate that. It's uncomfortable to use. That isn't. Or because it's um, a type of vessel which limits heat loss, it means this isn't going to be as hot. 
So you can just pick it up like that, no problem. And you can get ones without a handle if you don't want that. And they'll probably be in here, yeah. Oh, look. So Horizon Collection. It says here, Camelback Trademark has been hydrating and sustaining outdoor enthusiasts for over 30 years. No matter what passions you live for, we all need time to catch our breath true after a long day. Whether you want to celebrate a big win, hooray, toast a personal best, or just hang out with friends around a campfire, take time to gather, relax, and unwind. Of course, we all want to do that. So here's the range. So you've got the tall cup. That tall cup on the left, I've got like a version of that. It's like a knockoff version without the handle, and I think it was made by Ozark Trail. I don't know if that's like a Walmart company. And I think that's probably a 24, 26... 20, actually, it might be bigger than that. It might be a 32 ounce, or just under... So you can get that one, or you've got the camp mug, which is this one here, and there's the stats there. So you see in blue, it's got six hours, and then in red, four hours. So what they're talking about there is how long will it keep something cold? So it will keep things cold for six hours. So if you were to put like a load of ice in a drink in there, it's gonna maintain that temperature for you for quite a long period of time. And in regards to hot items, so like tea, coffee, or whatever, four hours, I think that's pretty good. Because obviously you're looking at sort of 20 minutes, half an hour for a normal cup in a porcelain cup or a mug or something like that. There's this small tumbler, the 12 ounce without the handle there. And then you have the 16 ounce tumbler, 20 and so on. And when I'm talking ounces here, which I know the Americans use, if you are UK or whatever like me, it's 350, I'm trying to remember now, 355 milliliters in this. In fact, it should say somewhere. Yeah, 0.35 minutes. So basically 350 millilitres, 355. Um, as an example, a can of Coke that you would normally buy in the shops or Pepsi or something like that would be 330, I think, off the top of my head. So slightly larger than that. It's basically what you're going to get in a, in a builder's mug, that sort of thing. So plenty of space in there. And I'll quickly show you the rest of them. I mean, it's not particularly interesting. You've got these little funny ones that look like they would hold a candle at a seance or something. I don't know what they're for. And the rest. Pretty boring. Um, you even get ones that you can put cans in. I don't know what the point of that is because I don't really have a can of Coke that long. That's so small that I can chuck them down in no time at all. But okay, you can get them. Um, and then it goes into some bits and pieces. Features. So vacuum insulated stainless steel. And I'll cover what that is and how it works. Non-slip silicon base. Easy to clean. So when they're talking about the base, they're talking about this. So all of this is your power coated stainless steel. But then you also have this here, which is your silicone. So... There's your metal, and then it goes to this here, so it's soft look. See my, my, I think from my nail will go into that. And it says there you've got your stainless steel, your 12 ounces, and blah, blah, blah. Very nice. So that provides a little bit of, a tiny little bit of grip, which is okay. Um, but like I say, as long as you're using this properly, if, you, if, you, if it drops quickly, you can quickly pick it up and it'll be fine. As long as you've got this in. I mean, some people don't like these. It's a bit like using a little child's Tommy Tippy. Timmy Toppy or whatever the hell they're called. Most people don't want that. They'll just use it like that. And I get that. That's fine. But obviously, like this, heat is going to leave quicker. So uh, they are claiming because this isn't plastic, although that is, um, and that will come into contact if you use it with the liquid that you're drinking. They are saying this is BPA-free, BPS-free, and BPF, I think. I will check that, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's true. BPA, BPS, BPF-free. Uh, In other words... It's not one of these plastics where as liquid comes into contact and is used, chemicals can leach from that plastic. They're claiming those specific chemicals are not here and you don't have to worry about them because there's cancer concerns and birth defect concerns and all sorts of things and sperm rates and all sorts of things. You can look that up if you want to. Uh, you know, in cheap, cheap stuff, you can get that. And there's just a quick close-up of the mechanism there. You see that? Then it clicks, then it goes up and clicks. So interesting, nice, no problems. And I like the way this is recessed. So when you take a drink, any any little drips will go back down there. They're not gonna like drip out onto the table. So nice design. There's a nice close up there and you can see it is angled down towards the mouthpiece there. Perfect, nice and thick actually, look. I don't think that's gonna fall to bits. And I like this double lipped gasket here. Excellent, okay. So in regards to this, here's your stainless steel section. It looks nice, nice and bright. It's got a slight texture, but a lot of these stainless steels do. Bear in mind it's stainless steel, not stain proof. So if you you know put red wine in this or you know creosote or whatever, it's gonna take on some of that colour eventually. You can scour um, these sort of 
surfaces, but you shouldn't have to do that if you're just drinking tea and coffee. So no problems with that. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm quite happy with how it looks. In regards to how it works, I mean, I will quickly cover this. Most people understand and know, in fact, we'll take this label off. Most people understand and know how a vacuum vessel works. Uh, I'll take this off, there you go. So there's the cup itself, pretty nice. And there it is in my hand. In fact, you know what? I'll, I'll do. I'll do one of my silly little drones because I know it annoys some people and delights others. Uh, so thinking about this, if this is a vacuum vessel, so basically instead of your, your traditional cup, which is like that, and you pour the hot stuff in, and there you go, and the heat radiates out and it can conducts out onto whatever's touching it, like your hand or whatever, and you get convection and all that, and comes out. You lose heat quite rapidly, don't you? So if you'd want to avoid that, one of the things you can do is you can use a vacuum vessel. So if you imagine, this is an oversimplification of how this works, but if you imagine a, a, a cut cross section, that's what you're going to see. So it's double walled. So your liquid goes in here. And I'm, again, this, is, this space isn't necessarily accurate, but this is how this would work. So there's your liquid. So if that's red hot, how's that going to lose that temperature? Well, it's going to try and get that heat is going to try and move from wherever it is to wherever it's less hot. So for example, let's say you've got that on a piece of metal or your hand, you're going to get conduction here. So that heat is going to conduct into another medium and be lost from this liquid. So annoying. And it can also radiate. So if you put your hand near a hot a hot cup, you're not, not necessarily touching it. You're not conducting the heat away. You're just doing that. You can feel it. So if you, if you think in your house, you've got radiators, their job is to radiate heat. So you're going to lose temperature like that through radiation and conduction. Um, there's also a bit of convection. Um, you know, if, if you think of like a convection oven or a convection heater, um, it's the same thing. You know, it's it's basically coming out. It's it's leaving this liquid, and it's coming into the air. Now, how these vacuum systems work is, I mean, the the original one it was a Scots guy. I think it was Sir James Dewar. I think it was called. You can sometimes or that you used to be able to buy Dewar flasks. I think that's more of a, um, a chemistry term, though you don't really see that now. And I know the thermos is what people think of, even though they didn't invent it, but I think they maybe applied the the, um, the full paint, and I don't know. Um, but it was a Scottish guy in it was early 1900s, 1890, something like that, um, who came up with the vacuum flask. And what's happening is... Um, he's t well. He, he took the air out of here, so it's a vacuum. So there's less in that space to take that heat and take it somewhere else. Y you're trying to create basically like outer space, you know, where there's nothing there. There's nothing for the heat to to move through in that medium. And also in that respect, what you know, I know they refined the the aspects of it uh, over time, um, but. What you would have found is they would have used reflective surfaces here, so any heat would just keep bouncing around, almost like mirrors, um, like mirrored surfaces. That's why originally they used to use glass because that's how you would make a mirror. Now you're not not so much um, because the problem with some of those is that they're very brittle. Glass can be brittle, and when it's getting hot and then going back to normal, then red hot and back to normal, or cooled if you're doing cryogenics, it can crack over time, and that's just you know stress problems with glass. That's what you're going to get because glass is brittle. You don't get that problem with stainless steel. I don't know how shiny it is in here, but I'm guessing it's some it's some sort of semi-mirrored surface within within here. So mirrored here and mirrored here to prevent loss of heat. So again, you're drinking a cup of coffee. We're not trying to get liquid nitrogen down to temperatures where you can get you know Walt Disney into a cryogenic chamber. And again, we're not putting hot lava in here or trying to get you know thermonuclear reactions to you know keep the heat it's a cup of coffee so in that regards and on here you know the rating is you know six hours of cold and four hours of heat now bear in mind for the four hours that would be like probably full right of the brim with that on and closed because obviously this is plastic so you're going to lose a bit of heat there but I don't want to waffle too long because I realise you know, I get a bit carried away at points. So in regards to this, and again, this is a first look, not a review because I haven't used it. I've just taken it out of the packaging. I like it. It's exactly what I wanted. It's a, it's a similar size to the cup that I'm replacing where everything would go cold all the time when I'm busy with uh, bits of equipment. I like this. Um, this will probably be optional. If I was near some machinery, I would definitely stick this on, do that, and then keep that down. Now, when I want to drink, boom, and it's got this little 
valve here so as I take a drink air can get in and fill the space that I'm taking out of the liquid so it's been well thought out and you can angle that looks clean nice and tidy and I like the little silicon non-slip base so anyway, I've wasted 15 minutes of your life with this overview. So if you have any questions or you think, you know, Camelback are rubbish or there's better ones out there, why don't you use Yeti? I would have got the Yeti, but when I looked at the prices, um, I wasn't very impressed. I thought, you know, I'm not a millionaire. All I want is a drink of coffee. So I avoided the Yetis, even though I know they're good. I know they're good. But there are other companies out there. So stick it in the comments if you think I know a better one or I use a better one or I don't think it's really necessary to have a vacuum flask for a cup of coffee, stop being so soft. Um, but I, the primary reason why I wanted this was I'd sick my coffee going cold and I don't want to spill it, simple as that. So there you go. So thank you very much for joining me. This was a quick overlook on the Camelback Horizon Range Camp Mug. This happens to be the 355 mil or 12 ounce if you're in the good old US of A. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to make a coffee. Goodbye.